Uganda continues to attract in test debate. Given the poor quality of service delivery, the test failed to adequately respond to need. Many of those who can't afford a quality service often fly out of the country to have their health attended to. Often the focus is pointed at the bigger and older hospitals such as Mulago, the National Referral Hospital, as well as other regional and district uh, referral hospitals built under previous regimes. Very often the debate excludes the much newer health facilities, including the health centers 2, 3 and 4, which were built under the current government. Most drawbacks come out of a lack of enough money to, for example, buy drugs, pay staff well, or even equip these health centers. Many buildings have been set up in the countryside in the last 15 years, that is health buildings, but they, often lack in, uh, they are often inadequate to meet local health care needs. The situation is the same even in the towns where some of these new facilities have recently been located. Now, two civil society organizations, that is the Health Rights Action Group and the Action Group for Health, Human Rights and AIDS, have been active in northern Uganda, specifically as well as the East. They have been trying to sample health work there to see if it fits the bill. Now, to see of our guests tonight on Spectrum work for those organizations and have been a part of that work. So tonight, tonight they share their experiences exclusively here on this show. The guests, Ms. Farida Nanyonjo, Program Officer at the Health Rights Action Group. You're most welcome, uh, Farida. Thank you so much. We're also joined by uh, Ms. Mary Kamukama, Legal and Human Rights Officer at the Health Rights Action Group. You're most welcome, Mary. Thank you, Moderator. And Ms. Claire Kam Claire Mujisha, Program Officer, Action Group for Health, Human Rights and HIV and AIDS. You're most welcome, Claire. Thank you, sir. On the line, we're joined by Honorable Sam Diomoki, Chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Health. Honorable Diomoki, welcome, Spectrum. Well, she'll, he'll be joining us shortly as soon as we get linked up with him. Farida, what is the state of health care in Uganda today? Uh, thank you so much, uh, Edmund. The state of uh, the health care today is in, especially uh, the maternal health, we are looking at the Millennium Development Goals, but we haven't gotten there yet because we have one our human resource. We, through our budget, we have the, rec the recruitment process has been delayed, the budget has been slashed, and we are working around to ensure that all this is 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 uplifted through the various work we are we are dealing with, and we are dealing with the communities, especially the the, the, the lower levels, and we are working through the existing structures. We are working with the health care workers. We are working with the district, that is the district health team members. We are working with the sub-county. We are working with the VHTs, those are the village health teams. And we are working with the, the, the health centers in the districts of operations that we are in. So that this we are working with for sustainability. And we don't want to, to bring in something new. All right. so, so you're working with existing structures. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, is the situation getting better or worse? The situation is getting better, but not at the pace we wanted it to get better. But at least we are we are seeing some change. First, we are we are seeing the communities are being empowered. Communities are taking on the, the duty bearers. We are seeing a, a pregnant woman who can ably stand up during a dialogue meeting, and this pregnant woman asks the MP. Take an example in Oyam where we. We are in a Bay sub county. These women have taken on the MP. We have uh, Beatrice. Who is there? Yes. Um, among. Yes. Among, among Betty. She's there, and right now, as we speak, she has given a bay. It's called a Tapara Hospital. She has given them an ambulance and a card, a referral card. We, a, every pregnant woman who cannot afford goes to a Tapara Hospital. A Tapara Hospital is the only hospital in a bay, but it's a mission, missionary hospital. So there's a surcharge that is given. These women find it easier to go for a, a hospital that gives charges some fee than having these our own the government structures that are safe because the services there are much better and 
they receive so much. So uh, the, the women down there in the communities, some of them do not afford this surcharge. All right. They, they, they charge. So uh, through the dialogues, these MPs have been taken off guard and they are buying ambulances and they are giving cards and we, together with the district they have, they have come up with an agreement so so far we have pregnant women who can testify and they are being treated or having a c-section free of charge all right that is a success okay let's get a little bit more detail on this at Tapa hospital is yeah. the end the hospital in which district which it, we are working in a sub county called abe where is abe abe is in oyam district oyam that's in the west no that's, that's lira yeah, place lira, the lira, lira. place and it's the only place in that place, the only hospital in that place, that's a missionary hospital. It's a missionary hospital. There's no government hospital. There's no government And they charge a fee here. The, yeah, there's a fee that is charged. All right, Mary, talk, talk to us about uh, why you think government is leaving these gaps. Why would we have a missionary hospital in providing such an important service in a place where people can't even pay, probably? Yeah, thank you very much, moderator. I think uh, having a missionary hospital is an added advantage. But for us, our concern is actually the state of the government health centers. You'll find that in a base sub county, which they're talking about, there is a health center too. But it is very lacking to even do basic delivery, which does not, you know, need uh, theater and all that. And even when you go to the government health centers in other districts, in, in, in the Acholi region and in uh, the greater north, you'll find that they are lacking. Those that are, those that, that are at a standard of uh, carrying out C-sections, you'll find maybe they lack the health care worker, they lack a doctor there, a full-time doctor, they lack the necessary uh, uh, utilities to use, and, and even the theatre is wanting. And so when we look at Apala a Mission Hospital, it is, it is something that is complementing government hospital, but still it's private, so it comes at a cost. Although it is under the public-private partnership, it still has a fee that is, you know, put for those who go to deliver there. So we are saying that looking at what we have seen this country go through, we have seen economic development, we have seen all this, but we are wondering why the welfare services are not improving, especially for the poor people. Yeah, because you'll find that very few people can afford to pay even the little fee, and particularly for mothers who are giving birth. They should be able to deliver safely at, at no cost if possible, because we believe that this country has the resources, except they've not been used effectively to improve the welfare infrastructures, which include the government hospitals. What do you mean the government has not spent money well? Because I, I will give you an example. We are talking about this debate of government committing the 49 billion for recruiting health workers and improving the welfare of health care workers. But the government is saying we do not have this money and we are willing maybe to give it in bits and then uh, realize the rest through supplementary <coughs> budget. But the same, the same media, the same papers print here stories of ministries that have, where people have been stealing billions and billions of shillings. So when you look at the national waste itself, the national loss that we, the various ministry, ministry sectors, then you wonder if that money, if all those resources were, you know, guarded generously and used to improve the government infrastructures, the hospitals, then would not be having this discussion. Because actually you'll find that health centers exist up to the, uh, the parish level. So really, if we could do better, if we could do better by committing more resources to improve the government health centers. Claire, what do you think the priorities should be? She highlighted an important fact. The structures are out there. People don't have to walk long distances. Yeah. So where should the money go in case we get the money? The priorities should be first recruiting the what? Human resources that are supposed to do these activities. I'm speaking about the nurses, the midwives who are doing these deliveries. One, recruiting them in the lower health facilities, health center twos and health center threes. Health center threes are bounded to the deliveries. And then also um, improving the referral system by uh, maybe co putting up ambulances, buying ambulances, and we commend those uh, MPs who have worked together with civil society, they have bought um, ambulances for their constituencies because these women have been, have really suffered uh, long distances without uh, 
quick means of transporting them from those very far rural health facilities. And also another priority could be definitely increasing the funding for the health sector. That has been our struggle as civil society. We request the government to allocate more so that we can at least reach to the 15% commitment of allocating 15% of uh, funding on health sector as it's stated in the Abuja Declaration. All right. Let's try and look at the north a little bit more closely again. A typical place. You said health centers exist. Mm -hmm. Give us a picture of a typical health center in that place. A woman walks five, five minutes, 15 minutes to a health center. Give us a picture there. Uh, an example is the sub county where I'm working in Alero. Alero. Alero sub county. That is the only health center three there is Alero Health Center 3. And now you can imagine a woman has to trek. Uh, over 60 kilometers. You can't walk that distance. They walk. And that's 60 why kilometers? That's a week, maybe. Uh, um, even more, when you hear what these women tell you. Here in Kampala, they tell us five minutes you get to health center. Because for. they have the cars, they have, they drive there. They have, but these women, the roads are bad. There is no ambulance. Their poverty, they don't have, their husbands even don't uh, work closely with them. Like maybe let me sacrifice and ride my woman to the facility. They have to trek in their condition. This is where male involvement comes in. Six, you said six person. kilometers. They walk six kilometers. Not six. More than that. Sixty. Six. You're being sensational. Tell us the truth. Sixty. Because yeah. when I an example of a place called Nyamkino. Nyamkino is, is, is in Alero, but it is so far away that there are no services. So what we as civil society do, as partners that are working in, in such districts, we have we have introduced the, the integrated outreaches. Mm -hmm. So here we have some aid. We, we, we get we support the midwife. The midwife goes to the far rich areas and conducts antenatal visits at least so that these women can be able to tap the service of, of having a midwife check on them. That is why we are seeing numbers of antenatal visits coming up. Mm. At least some of them have two antenatal visits. And remember these women are supposed to come up have four visits. And maybe So you and the NGO sectors are providing mobile services? No, the visit was, I told you earlier, we are working with three existing structures. Yes. There were outreach structures for gov government Already outreach existing yes. structures. So you're strengthening so them. As, as civil society or partners that are working on the maternal health project, we support the midwife, an extra midwife, to be able to go and carry out an antenatal services. Uh, outreaches are for just immunization. So we integrate. Support, we integrate mm -hmm. maternal health by supporting the midwife or an extra midwife, and we we mobilize through the VHTs. So there are many. The numbers come so many. These women come so many, and then they get at least an antenatal service or postnatal. That is after delivery when they, they bring their their babies for immunization. Yes. Normally, how do they deliver the women in the north in the under such circumstances? Is it still under the banana trees? Uh, the banana. Of of course, that banana tree theory was under the traditional birth attendants. These were the local old women who who took these women in their birth shelters at home and delivered them. But now that's what we are working against. We are working with these VHTs to sensitize the communities to uh, to go to the facility, health facility. Where there's a concrete flow, land water, flowing water. Yeah, <laughs> flowing water plus handled by a professional. You know now there there is a risk now. If uh, let me give a, a an example, an HIV uh, an HIV positive pregnant woman. Yes. If she was handled by those old women, the TBAs we're talking about, this TBA has she's not even skilled. She, she doesn't even have the equipment that are supposed to maybe help save the mother and the baby from the infection so it's a very great great risk we are leaving our mothers at Listen, this is Spectrum on Radio 1 tonight. The state of healthcare in Uganda. What is the exact situation in the country's north? Our guests, Ms. Mary Kamukama, Legal and Human Rights Officer, Health Rights Action Group. Ms. Farida Nanyonjo, Program Officer at the same place, and Ms. Claire Mojisha, Program Officer at the Action Group for Health, Human Rights, and AIDS. You will be able to call in and contribute to this discussion. Farida, we assume the north should have more attention. Is the situation different in other places? 
No, I wouldn't think the situation is different in other places because as Health Rights Action Group, we work in two districts. We have Noya, which is really, really a uh, 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 war torn area. And we no, have that's Gulu. Gulu. Those are the names that are more familiar yeah. with people. Yeah, people are more familiar Oyam. with Oyam. Oyam is, is, is uh, 50 50. Lango. Lango, but uh, all the same, all the services are. It's closer to Gulu, I think. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a big count, it's a county. Yeah, it is. But if you to compare notes, it's just the change in attitude. Those ones are, are more of, of, of the, the, the war torn area, but they are still changing their attitude towards life. And but the services, the healthcare services, is the same. Only that the advantage is that in Oyam, there are, there are missionary hospitals. Yes. That come in and help. But in Noya, it's strict. It's just government. Take an example in Noya, in the in the sub counties we are working in. In case of any reparo, a mother is referred to either Lacho Hospital or Bulu. Yes. But it, it's a two hours drive. From Noya to Gulu. From Noya, that is Anaka, Anaka Hospital, Anaka Health Center. For it's the only health center that is yes. in Noya. Yes. But it takes one to. First of all, they have to pay for fuel. Is that a tarmac road? No, it's not a tarmac road. And when it rains, they'll take more than three hours. And remember, some some of these mothers, most of the mothers who are referred are in a critical condition. Take an example, they, they have to deliver, they need a C-section. They have a theatre but it's not functional. And these, these women are supposed to be ferried. Some of them make it, some of them don't make it. Some women die. Yeah, they do. Preventable causes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mary, why, give us, uh, you underline this for us, why should they not be treated in a special way? If the situation is so the same in other places. No, actually, now when we are talking about the maternal health project, which both of these organisations are partners to, we are not looking at only the north. There are other districts. We are working in 14 districts all together, with other 13 partners from Voices for Health Rights, and we are funded for the maternal health project, improving maternal health project. So for us, we are speaking from the districts where we have been able to find out exactly what's happening where we are working but there are people in central region parts of Mukono and then they tell you that the situation is worse equally worse there are people in western districts there are people in even in the west yes there are people in Soroti they used to send milk when honey flows on the river parts no <laughs> the river that's on. not true so the, 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 the situation is still bad but we are not here to point fingers because I think we've pointed enough fingers at government and civil society. Yes. We just want consensus to agree and see how best can we improve. Because when you look at actually what is needed, for example, when you're talking about increasing the staffing, it does not cost so much that this government cannot afford. So we would want to see if we bring out these issues, these people have been in the field in the districts and they'll be able to tell you exactly what they find on the ground. If we are able to bring this to the table for government, there, there must be improvement. There must be, and we can't just keep talking about them. We want action to take place. Yeah, this is a three-year project and it has been, uh, I think, well-funded and people have been in the field and they've found out exactly what's happening. And these, these reports we are sharing with the duty bearers, we are sharing with government, we are sharing with members of parliament. She talked about uh, a bay sub-county where we contacted Betty Among. She has been helpful. We talked to some of the women there who say she gives them cards. I don't know if that comes She gives from. them what? She gives them emergency oh. cards. Okay, let's what's, say. What's that exactly? Uh, I don't know how it works because today in the afternoon I talked to one of the beneficiaries. She said she, she, she gives them emergency Cards. That card gives you access to hospital health. Yes, well, even if you went to Atapala, where it is, uh, where it's a mission hospital, house. where you have to pay something, they will take care of you at her cost. Or she will pay. Yeah, the, the member of parliament will pay. And even uh, I've been told that this other MP in Mukono, she has also done Betty the same. Numbers. Yes, she's provided an ambulance. So we are looking at every person who has a role to play doing the right thing.
Yeah, Claire, maybe you could take us a little bit deeper on these priorities. If you had the money, give us an idea about how much money is required. You talk about 15% MDG, the Abuja Declaration. You can't do it in two years. If you raise it, well, it's around about 9% now. Give us a timeline towards that. When, how do you climb to 15? And how would you spend the money if you had it tomorrow? If we got that money, definitely would spend it first on uh, strengthening the already set up structures. Strengthen them how? Recruit the numbers. Already, civil society was lobbying for uh, recruitment of 6,176 health workers. In Those are 19 in health center threes and 49 in health center fours. So that would be the first priority. Second priority, put in place the medicines. The medicines and also reduce the cost of these medicines, especially ARVs for HIV positive. Do people still pay for ARVs? No, they not. They don't. ARVs are free yes. in government health facilities. Then speak about other drugs. Also reduce, I mean, increase funding to make available the medicines so that they can also be affordable to the other communities who who don't have as, as much money. So you would need to get more stuff. Yeah, more stuff. What's the practice in other countries? What happens elsewhere? In other countries, I think it's you. You see, these other countries. Not Canada. I'm talking about Malawian countries such as those. <laughs> that is in in uh, Africa. The well. focus is on mainly the health workers. The health workers are the ones who drive the health care. You may have a structure, the building in place, but who is going to deliver the service? One, when you um, recruit more, motivate them so that they are able to treat these uh, the patients with what with the uh, they're motivated. They How do you motivate them? them? Give them patriotism classes or what? How do you motivate no, 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 health no. workers? Motivation is in different ways. Facilitate their You can upkeep. also facilitate. Housing. And then you improve the working environment. Give them the necessary equipment they're supposed to use. Improve their housing. Because, you know, if these health workers are working in unfavorable conditions, this is why vices like charging patients are going to come up. We've seen cases of a pregnant woman in Mukono who was uh, requested to pay is it 500,000 before she could be helped by a doctor. So That's such vices will start in a to come up which we are fighting. In a government health center? Yeah. Yes. Half a million shillings? No. Yes, for our delivery. So you see, we need to make these health work workers appreciate the environment they are working in and then also increase their numbers. Patriotism classes for health workers. We'll talk about this and other things that can be done. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. To know the state of healthcare in Uganda, what is the exact situation in the country is not specifically. We'll be back to stay tuned. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Bank of Uganda informs the public that from 30th March 2013, the old series banknotes will no longer be legal tender and therefore will be removed from circulation. The old series banknotes are those printed before the year 2010 and include the 10,000 shillings Chogam commemorative note. Please note the following dates. The old banknotes may be used until 30th March 2013, after which they will not be acceptable for transactions. The public then may exchange their old banknotes at any any commercial bank up to 30th May 2013. From May 2013 to 31st December 2013, only Bank of Uganda offices countrywide will exchange the old banknotes. Please note that no fees will be charged throughout the exercise until it ends in December 2013. For further inquiries, call us on 414 or email us on info at bou.or.ug. Sava, Sava, eh, oh, eh, my name is Kugoye Adela, very serious Congolese tailor. People see me when they want to look good. People leave my shop looking like superstars of TV. But however much I make you look beautiful or even sexy, like money, <laughs> I cannot change the person inside. But really, you, kind of like the Ganga Waraji. It has this beautiful look, but inside they are maintaining the same old spirit at all. The same old spirit we have known for many years in a new suit. Uh, uh, sorry, a new look. <laughs> oh, let me try it. Hey, 
avoid the new look to Gardenology. The same garden spirit with the new look to Gardenology. Same spirit, the new look. Gardenology. Excessive consumption of alcohol is harmful to your health. Not for sale to persons under 18 years. Please drink responsibly. Uh, excuse me, guys. Let me through, please. Chick, chick, this cat. Goodness, stop! What are you doing? Get real. Just, just move. Just what? A little bit. Man, what are you doing? Bringing a cow into the sitting room? It's just for when I want milk. Just what? Just please move. Let it come and sit here. Show me this guy. You cannot keep a cow in your home, but you can get the freshness of its milk straight from the farm into your home. Get fresh diary milk. The freshness straight from the farm every day. Fresh diary. So fresh. Discover the new invigorating taste of Red Vodka Lemon. Red Vodka Lemon. Reinvent the night. Yet for sale to persons under 80. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. The state of healthcare in Uganda. What is the exact situation in the country's north? Our guests tonight, Ms. Farida Nanyonjo, Program Officer, the Health Rights Action Group. Ms. Claire Mjisha, Program Officer, Action Group for Health, Human Rights and HIV and AIDS. And Ms. Mary Kamukama, Legal and Human Rights Officer, the Health Rights Action Group. You will be able to call in and contribute to this discussion. Farida, does AIDS compli complicate the health equation? Yeah, AIDS does, especially when it comes to maternal health. We find that there's an element of uh, prevention of mother to child. So here we we want to male support. We are pushing for male support for for these mothers to go with their spouses for the test. But you find that even the status of the husband is revealed, and so chaos starts from there. Oh. The man comes with the wife? Yeah, so if the man comes... They were innocent before, they didn't know what their health status was. They were was. innocent and they, now they have results. Then what happens? So what does the man say? You brought If they are positive, both of them... The man says you, you brought yeah, it. You did. But if, disco if they are discordant, especially if the man is positive, then there's trouble. And if the woman is positive and the man is not... But they are what do you mean if they are discordant couples, they still trouble? How do you explain it? If the man is negative and the woman is positive, yes. the man will say you got it from another place. The man will, like, life won't be the same. Because the man says, I don't have it, where did you get it yes. from? You, it seems even that child is not mine. And if the man has it and the woman doesn't have it? The, the, the woman will have to stay behind. See, it's reversed. The woman will have to stay behind. There are some three cases during our tour. We had a tour around to meet uh, the beneficiaries. So there were some two women who were positive and have had positive babies, but through the intervention of the program, they have managed to get negative babies. But the strangest thing about it all, two of them from different villages, they were positive already, but they got negative men, and the men stood by them, and the, the men are still... In really? Pain. So... The men knew the women had AIDS, and they yes, married them all the yeah, same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They married them, they are with them, and they're supporting them. And they're having children with them. They're having children, and the men are not infected? They are not. How do they do that? They take... There's a drug that you take before intercourse, and they won't get AIDS? Is that true? No, it's, it's for them, it's try and error. Mm. Much as they have been, you pray hard before you go to bed that night. Uh, no, no, it's about it's not about praying hard. Much as they have been advised to, to use protection, some of them don't. Most of them don't. Let's explore this question. A certain president, I won't name from which African country, said he took a shower mm. with a, after sleeping with a woman who had AIDS and he didn't get AIDS. Mm. Give us the dynamics of that. Under what circumstances can a man sleep with a woman who has AIDS and they don't get it? No, it's not possible. Explain to us. They have to either be using the safest means that is protection, a condom, 
that is the best way because even this uh, safe male circumcision that is a new strategy that is coming up it does not guarantee 100 percent it doesn't turn you into metal it has only uh 30 percent protection i mean okay yeah guaranteed protection so it doesn't mean when you're circumcised you can also just go dashing to everyone it doesn't work that way and that that uh member is it a violent you've just the president of the i don't know the country he took a shower no 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 very wrong there's need for people to be aware there is ignorance among people now this is a president of a sovereign african state what's your ex own experience discordant couples yeah actually medic medic medically there is always discordance in in relationships even people who are long term not for one one stand but that one can be explained better i think by the doctor there, there are people who will not be able to transmit hiv to their spouses they are carriers yes they are either carriers or they are lucky in in god's own making but hiv you know is transmitted every other day and it's very unfortunate for a leader to be ignorant that he could get hiv with or without another leader in the same country said so hiv, Even HIV doesn't cause aids <laughs> yes. One country, one nation. I don't nation on that. It has, HIV AIDS has also been a challenge in our maternal health struggle because it has also been the, it has stimulated up gender-based violence, like Farida said. Yes. But then also the women we've spoken to in the community say that when they get these medicines, the ARVs from the health facilities, they will throw them behind the facility because their husbands, they can't get them swallowing this. Listen, listen, a woman comes to the health center, yeah. gets the she's ARV. diagnosed, she's told she has AIDS, yes. the man doesn't know the status. She's put on treatment, given the tablets, but she will not take those tablets. Because she can't swallow them at home. Mm -hmm. yes. Questions will be asked. That's why we found uh, those tablets outside the health facilities behind because we we'll let your husband find you swallowing those things. This is why we're encouraging couple testing. Let the men be involved. Go together with them. Support your woman. Let's talk about uh, Mary. Let's talk about our situation. This is a poor home, the Ugandan home. We don't have a lot of money as you might know already. What can we do under the circumstances? Um, I do not want to believe that we do not have the resources. Really? Yes, we are not one. We are not among the poorest countries of this world, and uh, we have been lucky. We have discovered more resources, so we are hoping for a better future. And then we also have countries that have small economies and have just started. They've taken off just a few years. I'll give you an example: Rwanda. But the most important thing is where we're putting our priorities. Yes. We Go to, talk to us about Rwanda a little bit more. Yeah. The, I uh, from 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 the little I have learned from Rwanda, from shared with colleagues there, they have a very fast-growing healthcare system, and it is pro poor, and it takes care of those people who do not have much to give, but are in dire need of health services. It, it both has the insurance scheme and they have also a nationwide health insurance scheme. scheme exactly. We have, have it, I think, for, for only for Parliament. Yes. In Rwanda, 11 million people have health insurance. Exactly. Paid for by the government. Paid for by the government. And there's also a contribution that the people, the citizens, make towards, you know, towards the health scheme itself. So, I don't... And Rwanda's, Rwanda's GDP is just one-fourth of Uganda's GDP. It's much poorer. Yeah, than yeah, yeah, it's much poorer but it's developing fast. Maybe we'll, we'll soon we shall start seeing people flying to Rwanda to get medical attention. As, they are flying to As we've been seeing people fly to Europe, go to Kenya, Nairobi. And, and, and I think Uganda as a country has the resources to get to the same standards or even better. But we have not given our priority to the health care in Uganda. And that's what we want to see happen. Let's talk a little bit about our health experts who fly abroad. Why do they fly to other countries? Is it the weather or what? <laughs> no, I, I think I think they do not they cannot find the quality of health care here back home. What they would expect. Or no, the doctors who go abroad. Or the doctors. The doctors are running away because maybe they, 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 there's a better promise outside you. Oh, they are really the pastors? Yes. Uh, and, and, and because of the way we are, we educate these people and they graduate and they are all over the place, but they get frustrated along the way. We cannot retain them. They get poor pay. And then they get to learn that outside Uganda, 
doctors are well paid, doctors are well facilitated, so they choose to leave their country. Well, but the government has been generous. They say they'll pay two and a half million shillings every month for those who stay. Oh, yes. W w yeah, that's a commitment that government has made, and yes. I, I'm that actually I am happy with the commitment the Prime Minister made. They, 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 they've already so far given six billion towards the retention mm -hmm. and, and also the recruitment process that government started. So I would also want to see the remaining 43 billion realized and then we can take it from there. We'll see what happens after that if these resources are committed to our health, uh, to the health sector. Claire, give us your own prognosis of this disease of health, doctors leaving the country. They leave because of uh, one of the pay, of course. The greener pastures we've said they want to look for. Where they've studied like over six years, five years, they Medicine. school. Yes. And all that timing and comparing it to the 800,000 or less or one million that they are being paid and looking at their workload, <coughs> taking an example of a midwife in Arapa, Soroti, who has to work the whole day. She's the midwife, she's the vaccinator. In Soroti? She's, the one who, she's everything. She's one midwife who's doing, running the whole facility, yes. receiving over um, 60 to 100 patients a day. The end of the day, she has no time for her own self, for her own family. So workload and pay are very... At the end of the month, they give her 2 million. Mm, 2 million? How much do they give that ah. woman? Like uh, 800, maybe, uh, yeah. But, but in a place like Sorot, it's not too little. But even 800, I don't think she gets that. Probably 500. Farida, how did you treat our health workers in the past? Maybe they were simply more patriotic. They used not to run away that much. And it's not just at the, at the national level, it's even at the community level. Take an example in, in Oyam. Yes. In a bestial. That is at Oyam district. The uh, UNFPA trained nurses for midwife, mid midwife, midwifery. Yes. But immediately after training them, they ran to the urban centers, they ran to town. So I think even then, that other time or those other days before, I don't know when, midwives, doctors were there. There, meaning that they, they, maybe their kids were, were looked after, their salaries were good, their houses were there, their leave schedules were uh, respected. But now you find that I am one midwife, I work 24 hours, I don't have leave, I don't have even lighting, I use my own, my own telephone. The conditions are very bad, so in case I get anything, I can just jump on the next plane. Lighting is not good. <coughs> There's no lighting. You find, take an example, you know, yeah. They use their phones. Their phones. Well, when they're putting on a patient in the night. Mm. Even they use cavity, so yeah, but you need to promote cavity. I am a midwife. I am in the, in the labor ward. I have to use my mouth <laughs> Go on. to hold the, 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 the light. The, 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 <laughs> it is That's just my phone. Go on, madam. And then I use it, the experiences, and it is a normal delivery. You know, normal delivery. Blood is everywhere. Oh, okay. So I, 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 my hands are busy. I'm full. And, that is and the mouth is also busy. And the mouth is also busy. Holding the torch. Yes. Which is your mobile phone. My mobile phone and women just come in. The battery runs out, you go home. Because it's in the night. It happens. The alternative is those kerosene lamps, which of course sometimes you hear them saying, sometimes you don't have um, paraffin. So really, lighting in the health facilities should be addressed. In and um, in some health centers, the government has supported, um, or some NGOs have, have, have gotten solar panels. And the community are stealing the solar panels. Solar panels? Yeah. And the communities are stealing them? Yeah. Patriotism lessons. Let's hear from the listeners. This is Petro Radio on tonight, the state of healthcare in Uganda. What is exactly the situation, specifically in the country's mouth? You can call in now. We are unable to get to Honorable Sam Yomoki, chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on Health. He was supposed to join us on this show on the line. But you can call in now. Our number is 414 0314-348-111-0312-260-390-0312-261-390. Zero. When you call in, please tell us your name and where you are calling from. Claire, you say the priority should be staffing. They should work on staff. Does the government have the capacity to do that? It does have the capacity. Um, Ministry of Finance, together with uh, the MPs and Ministry of Health, sat together and checked out the, the budget, budget allocation. Yes. And they picked out money from 
different sectors which they put to, in, to work on this recruitment of health workers. And they intend to recruit um, 1,000. 1,014 1, enrolled midwives and then 758 nursing officers, 223 medical doctors and 283 anesthetists. Anesthes. Yeah. All right. So we we are we are strongly Okay, the lines are now open. That the government has done. They've been rectified, rectified. We we apologize for that short delay. Special Malo. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening, madam. Your name? I'm Elizabeth. Yes, is a Zombo. Motongo, yes. Yes, I'd like to thank you for that topic on maternity health. And I'd like to thank the ladies in the studio because they are bringing down um, important issues in relation to maternity health. However, I would really um, appreciate if they tell us facts because some of the things they are telling us are seen or sound way out of reach. For example, where someone was saying that uh, uh, she works in a sub-county and then mothers walk 60 kilometers to reach a health center. Now, a health center for me is supposed to be a sub-county level. So, for sure, a sub-county can be a sub-county level. The small geography I know of Uganda is that at least a, a, a district can have a radius of 60 kilometers and not a sub-county. So, when we give um, fat that are misleading, then people may not really understand us. But otherwise, I agree with you, maternal and child health are issues that we should do seriously. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth in Matungo. Spectra Malo? All right. Yes, Claire, would you like to clarify that? Uh, maybe I no, you're right yeah now. sure I could clarify yeah maybe uh, let's not even think about the 60 kilometers that she mentioned but we are looking at a district which where the health center threes are existing but they are not able to give the service especially of uh, cesarean birth so she has to cross so she has to cross from the sub county she talked about and then ride either on a motorcycle or on a bicycle up to Gulu that's the 60 kilometers you're talking about. Yeah, that could come to It's not that there are no health centers, but no, 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 they are existing health centers. They won't centers, help her. But they are not functional. Yeah, thank you. Let's talk about the referral hospitals, the old ones that were built during previous governments. Are they working well? Are they well stocked? The original referral hospitals. I think um, in Anaka. Okay, Spectre Hello. Hello, this is Elizabeth. Again. Yes, Elizabeth. And uh, I really want to. Um, Before you could actually get even into the middle 
of your point clear in the meantime. Policy. What's wrong with policy? Farida, talk to us about policy. What can be changed about government policy? I concur with the speaker, Elizabeth, that health centre tools are not poly, at policy level, they are not supposed to do the deliveries. Yes. But it's true, that is what is happening, because you find that the distance in between their homes and health centre 3, the only alternative is what? Opting for health centre 2, where they do emergencies. Okay. <coughs> Let's get emergencies. Church Ambrose is back now. Spectrum, hello? Yes. What, what do you mean that MP wanted to go away? Anyhow, we, you left before you could get that clarity. We would have loved to hear what happened to that doctor who was going on. Anyway, let's yeah, continue, please. Yeah, I was just saying about the health center too. It's a government policy. They are not supposed to deliver. That's why they don't even have the midwives and they don't even have the pit latrine. I mean, uh, sorry, the placenta pits for the deliveries. But they act as emergency points to receive these women who the labor has occurred at night and the only alternative there is no supportive husband to escort them there. Instead of delivering in the hands of a TBA, they try with all their effort to reach the nearest facility which is a health center to closer to them so is there something wrong with policy Farida? There's, there's nothing very wrong there's nothing wrong with policy but what is happening the situation is health center to the delivery in, in actual practice yes, on a day-to-day -day -day basis and uh, as we speak the districts that we are operating in the, the, the district health team, or there are some, uh, some uh, civil society organizations that have extended and they are building maternity and they are putting maternity facilities. And we find that they had one maternity bed, most of the, 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 the health center tools. One maternity bed but for were, emergencies? Yes, for emergency. But the numbers are overwhelming. They are, communities are demanding for more beds yes. and better services. So we find that actually there are more health center tools at the, at, at, yes, at the, parish, at the, at the parish level, but the policy does not allow, but it is happening. Yeah, I yes, would like to just uh, say appreciate what the contributor, the lady who called. Yes, we have existing policy, and I think it is it it, it is it was meant to follow what the uh, to fit into the local government system because you'll find that health centres are actually they were they were planned and constructed at the nearest you know the nearest community centres so that the services are near. But we must also look at policy. Is it relevant? We must give relevance to the policy. If you have these, we if you have structures which are near to the people, and they are supposed to be giving service, but yeah. they are not functional, they cannot give service. Then policy is just only on paper. It does not apply, and it's irrelevant. How should they change it? The health centre tools should be able to do what they're not. No, doing. you see, let's go by policy. If you say that a health centre three is supposed to have a staffing level of about 19 staff. Let, let them be recruited. What was the standard the health now? Health Center 3 is what do they normally have numbers? Uh, depending numbers. on each district, the, the, I think the, the, the further the further off, the worse off. Give us your experiences from the north and the, the north. Uh, I am not very sure with the statistics, but from my colleagues who have been working there, I will yeah. tell you that there's, like, for example, one one person at a whole. Why are you supposed to have 19? Yes, mm -hmm. at a health center 4 in, uh, in Anaka. That health Center 19. Farrow. Hospital. Where is supposed to have 19 staff? staff. Take an example when we... You have, you have one member. Is that practical? Is that possible? I mean, uh, no. We are looking at our health center 3. Yes. It's supposed to have 19. Uh, How many does it have? It has less than 7. And it, 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 Around about 6. One third. Yeah. 30 percent staff. It's between 5 to 8 staff. And it's one person who, who checks... Uh, dispenses, immunizes, carries out deliveries, and maybe they are on, they are on leave. They have to take an example in Noya. They, 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 they are back to school because they want to upgrade. 
they have to travel from uh, their sub counties, various sub counties, or even the, the, the Anaka Hospital to come to Guru for weekend program. They leave at on, on around Friday, so someone comes in for sitting for them, and then they go back on Monday, and it is that is what is happening. <coughs> That's very difficult. Let's talk about a little bit about the drugs, national medical so as opposed to supply drugs in these health centers. Mm. Do the drugs get there on time? We are talking about drugs. Like it's, 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 remember, it's, it's a push system. They, 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 they just push to, 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 to this other cell cell. What do you mean by push system? You, you don't request. Oh, they, they guess what you, they think you yes. need. So sometimes when, when you want something, even as uh, the basics, take an example, gauze yes. or cotton or gloves. Yes. You, you sometimes don't have, so you have to ask someone to, to come them. with their own. Yeah, to come with their own, or now we have some uh, uh, people, it's a ministry who is playing the mama kids. Okay, the drugs sent by enemies, I think there's been a, an improvement in the delivery. The communities, with the health facilities we work with say they have been delivered at least on time, although they last for only a few weeks, one week to maybe two weeks, and they are done. And this is also because of the communities. When they learn that NMS has sent the drugs, they go, they go and to stock. the facility even when they are not sick. They stop. So this is why we are coming in and calling on to the participant as well to to change their behaviors and right. seek health services when they need them. Not in anticipation, okay. talking, creating little pharmacies at their own homes. Well, go. thank you very much, dear guests. Ms. Farida and your Program Officer of the Health Rights Action Group. Thank you for coming to Spectrum tonight, madam. Thank you so much, Edmund. Ms. Mary Kamukama, Legal and Human Rights Officer of the same group, Health Rights Action Group. Thank you for coming, Spectrum. Mary. You're welcome. Ms. Claire Mujisha, Program Officer, Action Group for Health, Human Rights, and HIV AIDS. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmund. Just to spread our back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English. My greatest music here today is time. The first time I heard the electric guitar on my phone.